Welcome to the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you highlights from our policy experts' media appearances. Each week, we address the nation's pressing issues, guided by policies that put America first. Chad Wolf appeared on Fox News to discuss the ongoing border crisis and the administration's lack of commitment to securing our southern border. Chad underscores the administration's failure to prioritize border security, emphasizing how technology like cameras and radars should be a central focus of federal resources. He points out that instead of focusing on protecting the border, the administration is directing billions of dollars to NGOs and migrants, which is misaligned with the concerns of the American people. Well, I do think it's a significant issue that, look, the Border Patrol and the deputy chief there can tell you they use these cameras, they use radar, they use other technology so that they have that domain awareness across that border. So it's not only making sure you can pick up the folks that you you can see and you have assets in place and agents in place, but also the gotaways, understanding that you have a good idea of who's crossing that border. And so this goes back to priorities, in my view, and this administration is not prioritizing border security. So when they see that certain technology is down, and if it is a funding issue, as the deputy chief said, right, not enough resources are being dedicated to that, but yet billions are going out the door to continue to go to NGOs and migrants I think the, the priorities of this administration continue to be out of step with the majority of Americans. They should be focusing on border security. If that means surging, um, you know, operations and, and maintenance to get those uh, radars and, and cameras back up and running, that's what they should be doing. Their priorities, though, as we've seen over the last three and a half and four years, are, are, are certainly elsewhere. Michael Falkender was on The John Frederick Show to break down the failure of Bidenomics and its impact on American families. Michael highlights the systemic issues in the banking industry, worsened by the administration's inflationary policies. He explains how Biden's excessive government spending has led to skyrocketing costs for consumers, especially young Americans struggling to buy homes due to high interest rates. That's what the FDIC is recognizing, is that we got a lot of banks that are sitting on quite a lot of losses. Um, you know, Much like what we were looking at in the late 80s and early 90s, there are some potentially some zombie banks out there. And what we need to do is get interest rates down. That's going to help the banks more than anything else, let alone helping borrowers. You know, young people these days, the biggest problem they have is they can't go buy a house because interest rates are so high. But as long as the government keeps spending, as long as we keep over-regulating and over-taxing, we're going to keep pressure on prices. That's going to keep interest rates high. And not only are consumers going to be unable to move into houses, but we're going to have banks that are going to fail as a result of it. General Keith Kellogg appeared on Fox Business to discuss the opportunities for U.S. diplomatic leadership in the Middle East. General Kellogg emphasizes that America must lead through diplomacy, working with allies like Qatar to encourage the release of hostages and contain threats in the region. He criticizes the current administration's lack of engagement and highlights the strategic opportunities available in the wake of recent developments. And what the United States should do instead of talking to Israel what, is, what the United States should do is to pick up and call some of the allies in the region. For example, we believe that the next person in line of Hamas is a guy named Halad Mashal. He is currently in Doha, in Qatar. Well, we've got a good relationship with the Altani family, the Sheikh Altani, who runs Qatar there in Doha. And to kind of say, OK, we want you to intervene with 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 Hamas, with the leadership of Mashal is, in fact, the leader right now and say, look, why don't we start good faith? Release the hostages, those that you have still left alive. And nobody knows, Neil, how many are still left alive, but release them. And we should be very concerned about that because there's at least four Americans that are still being held hostage. So you need to reach out. Everything we talk about with Israel, we the United States, it kind of falls on deaf ears right now because, you know, think when you look at Joe Biden, he's only talked to Netanyahu twice in the last 55 days. And Kamala Harris hasn't done it at all. So they don't have any real credibility. So use the allies as leverage. Kind of say, this is where we want to go. Because I think there is an opportunity. And there's a chance to grab it. But we're going to have to lead. And we lead with the alliance that's there. Former Secretary Robert Wilkie joined Newsmax to critique the Biden-Harris administration's foreign aid strategy, particularly its aid to Gaza. Secretary Wilkie argues that the administration's approach to sending humanitarian aid into Gaza is misguided, as much of it ends up in the hands of Hamas. An America First approach would ensure aid is properly directed, prioritizing American interests and preventing the empowerment of terrorist groups. Well, absolutely. It's an indictment of the Harris 
Biden foreign policy. And, I, and I'll just echo what the National Review said yesterday. It is a moral disgrace. Uh, what this is is posturing for the weeks before the election. They just sent a letter to Netanyahu demanding that he put more aid, humanitarian aid, into Gaza or face a, an American arms embargo. Well, let me tell you what happened to the last aid convoy that hit hit Gaza. Of the 100 trucks, we know that 47 of those trucks were commandeered by Hamas. This is the Biden-Harris lifeline to the Hamas terrorists. And the other thing they're demanding is that is that the Israelis cooperate with UNWAR, the UN Relief Works mm-hmm. Agency, which every one of us knows has been the cover for Hamas terrorism for decades. I'm glad you went there. Riley Gaines appeared on Fox News to discuss the integrity of women's sports and the courageous stand taken by athletes at Nevada's volleyball team. Riley commends the athletes for their decision to forfeit a game rather than compromise their safety and fairness in competition. She calls out the failure of leadership among coaches and university officials, emphasizing that policies must protect the integrity of women's sports and the well-being of female athletes. Since when did we allow our leaders, elected or appointed for that matter, to knowingly do what is unfair, unjust, unsafe, and just plain wrong? If our leaders cannot find it within themselves um, to do the right thing, then step aside and allow someone who can to, to be in that position. So I guess whether get a slide and a moral compass or get out of the way. Was it the majority of the team that said we want to forfeit with all the women or uh, just the majority? No, uh, these teams, all five of them, actually, they ended up taking a vote. Uh, and what we've seen in all five teams is the overwhelming majority of players decided that that it wasn't worth it. They said, we know we're standing down, but in reality, we're standing up. Uh, we are standing up for, for not just ourselves and our teammates, uh, but for many future generations of women and girls to come. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights from our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.